This program is sponsored by Maronite College of the Holy Family, Parramatta. Welcome to Educating for Success, filmed right here at Maronite College of the Holy Family. My name is Sister Margaret and I'm the Principal of the College. So we're going to discuss the curriculum in the area of PDHPE and VAPA. So we have two special guests in our studio today, our wonderful studio. <laughs> Michael Abood, how are you going, Hi, Michael? Hi, Sister, how are you? Good. Marianne, how are you? Hi, Sister, I'm well, thank you. Okay, Michael, you're the PDHPE coordinator. Firstly, yes. can you tell our listeners out there what does PDHPE stand for? Yes, PDH stands for Personal Development, Health and Physical Education. Okay, so what subjects are involved? Involved in PDHPE, we involve 7 to 10 PDHPE, which is a mandatory course by the Board of Studies. We also have elective, which is Year 9 and 10 PASS, which stands for Physical Activity and Sports Studies. As we get on to Year 11 and 12, we have PDHPE, which is a theory-based co course, different to our 7 to 10 practical-based. We also run sport, lifestyle, recreation, and community and family studies. Okay, and they're abbreviated to SLR? And SLR and CFS. Okay, thanks. Marianne, VAPA, what does VAPA stand for? VAPA stands for Visual Art, Visual Arts, Performing Arts. Okay, and subjects? Subjects include music, drama, and art. That's easy enough, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but drama is only for year 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay. So stage five and six. Okay. We don't do it in year seven and eight. I'm going to get each of you to discuss a bit what does each subject involve, what's, uh, what, what's covered in those areas. Yep, so in seven to ten PDHPE, yep. we look at building a student in a holistic approach. So as a health perspective, to be a healthy person, you need to be physically, socially, emotionally, cognitively and spiritually healthy to be considered a healthy person. So we look at health from a broad aspect and we incorporate things like healthy eating, um, lifestyle choices, we look at drug use, decision making, sexual health, all aspects that will impact on a young person. On the practical side, we do different uh, components of fitness and different sports which break down. So we do things like gymnastics, basketball, cricket, football, soccer, swimming, Talking and just general fitness. When you say football, which football are you referring to? We look at to? all games. So oh. in year seven and eight, we do touch football. Mm -hmm. As we get to nine and 10, we break it down to AFL and Gaelic football, oh. just to give a bit of variety. And Gaelic football? It's taken over, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to rugby? <laughs> Hands off policy. <laughs> Okay, keep going. All right. Yeah, so as we get into our year nine and 10 pass course, it's an elective. So we generally get um, the sporty kids picking the subject. We look at things like coaching. We look at um, working with disabled athletes, pregnant athletes. Mm -hmm. We look at things like designing uh, programs for strength training. We look at um, just being healthy in general. So the kids enjoy it. They, we make it practical with our assessment base, so it's quite fun. Um, as we get to year 11 and 12, we look at things like first aid. We look at the body in motion, so we break it down on a biomechanical and scientific aspect. And in SLR, it's more practical based. So we focused this year on Gaelic football as yeah. their assessment task, yeah. as their first one. Yeah. And we did, yeah, it's a new course, so we're going along steadily. Can I ask why you focused on Gaelic football? <laughs> because it's something different. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we give a skill to a kid yeah, that they're, and it's boring for them, so give them something that will challenge them and stimulate their thinking and learning. Okay, thanks, Michael. Mary Ann? Want to talk about what's involved in each subject? Okay, so first of all, we'll start with visual arts. Visual arts starts as a um, mandatory subject in seven and eight, where kids get a wide range of abilities, I mean, activities that they can include in terms of painting, drawing, printmaking, and sculpture. Um, and then it goes on to elective in year nine and ten, and eleven and twelve. And we have a, we've been seeing an increase of numbers. A lot of the kids are looking to actually develop their skills in that area and actually going on and to do it as a career, which is excellent. We've got quite a few graduates <laughs> who do continue with the visual arts and it is becoming more of a trend. 
especially with my two year nine groups, which is going along really well. Um, in music, again, we're starting to develop that area. It seems like the school is asking for more of a creative spiritual growth, which we tend to do. And music now is taking off in year 11, um, which it hasn't done in quite a while, which is excellent. We have a new teacher on board, which is definitely a good thing um, in terms of motivating kids, getting them more excited about the subject. And now year seven and eight are actually loving music more than ever with their new guitars and their new, um, you know, state of the art music that we're trying to develop. Um, we're also starting now to look at uh, production, music production with Year 11, and they're starting to take their own songs, which are written by the music teacher himself, so that's actually coming along really well. Um, and alongside that is drama, which is going along well as well, which is primarily 9 and 10 and 11 and 12. Kids here, again, get to, you know, extend themselves creatively and you know express themselves in a different form. Um, again, we have a lot of the kids who are quite creative get an opportunity to show that at assemblies and at uh, church services. So that's always a good thing. Okay, Michael, sport. How well do you rate our children, our students in sport? I rate them very highly. Mm. And the reason being, I compare our school to other schools, we're only choosing from 40 to 60 kids maximum whereas when you look at the schools we're playing against they have 200 mm. and a lot of our students some of them who actually do play outside of school for whatever reason don't represent the school and we still perform quite well in grand finals and in the ability that we show if you're talking about healthy lifestyles generally speaking do our students follow healthy lifestyles or not i think they do but as they get older they fall into different traps so for example, in 7 to 10, we do a lot of fitness testing and there's PE twice a fortnight. Once they get to year 11, there's no more practical side of it unless they choose that subject. And what I noticed with my year 11 class, we did a beep test last week and the average for the girls in that age was 7.9 and only one girl made it to the average. And for the boys, our highest boy scored 13, which was only considered very good. And again, majority of them fell below average. So as we get older and as the students get older, they tend to take a back seat to their approach towards health and focus on their studies. Mm, that's, yeah, I was going to ask, yeah. why do they take a back seat with their health? Yeah, because a lot of them still love it and they still, and when they looked at their results, it's like, oh, so we weren't like that before. And I'm like, and that's what happens when it's not given to them. They have to find it on their own way. Okay. And it becomes a lot harder for them. mary you're saying a lot more students are picking now the arts. Why would a student pick the art subjects in Year 11 and 12? Where would that lead them to? I feel like the reason why there has been a larger majority of kids picking it now is because we're getting a lot more parents fostering that at home, the creative arts. And they're seeing, I guess, through a lot of the kids that graduated from here, that there is a possibility of a career in, in the arts. Um, we have had a lot of people who have graduated, who've gone on to be visual arts teachers successfully, who have got their own business in um, makeup, Melissa Sassine oh, yes. in particular, mm -hmm. who's running her own makeup school, Christopher Esber, who's a fashion designer. And a lot of the kids now are realising that art is one of those creative outlets that they can use as a career, not just as something to do for a fun afternoon. So yeah, there's been a major increase and it has a lot to do with the graduates, but also with the fact that People are realising it's not just a fun thing, it's something that can lead can be to taken the future. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said music was something we haven't had for years in Year 11. It was basically yeah. Year 7 and 8 they had to do it and no one really ever chose it as an elective in Year 9 and 10. But we seem to have an interest now. Do you want to explain why that's happening? I feel there's a big interest more so now because a lot of the kids from primary school who have been doing it outside of school are continuing to do it outside of school. When they've gotten to year seven and eight, there tends to be a drop off because you know they're taking their studies more seriously. But it seems to be that parents are more interested in continuing that. And they feel like as a whole being, my student, my, my son or daughter needs to have different interests as well. Um, we have a lot of kids who do violin, a trumpet, um, extracurricular activities, and they're thinking of doing that more as an academic subject. And it is becoming increasingly something that is an option, which it hadn't been previously. Mm. Our Year 11 group that we've got now are a lot of kids who, taking it seriously, they want to do sound engineering, okay. they want to do career in drama, in music. 
it is something that they've taken on board as a career once again. And it is something that is a bit more fathomable. It's not something that, oh, you know, in my dreams I would love to be. It is something that's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a bit more I'm available. Se- I'm seeing that in primary as well because we were running this year, you know, if parents want their children to learn an instrument yeah. during school time, we have a tutor. And we've got up to 60 students in primary who are willing, you know, to have that ha- only half an hour of, you know, music lessons yeah. a week, but parents are willing to, to mm. participate in that. Yeah, that interest in primary then follows on into high school, that's and right, I found right. that that hasn't been the case previously. No. It is more so now. Mm, mm. So that, that's a great thing for us. Yeah, and I think maybe something else with music um, studies have shown uh, that music can help the students study better. Absolutely. Mm. Or, or creative arts and, and sport Absolutely. and all that stuff. It all contributes to a better student who yeah. can study better with a healthy lifestyle and music and art. Michael, why would a student pick? PDHPE subject in senior years, where would that lead them to in regards to career? Most of them pick it because they enjoy the subject, firstly. Because you're the teacher. Obviously. (laughs) And then in terms of career path, a lot of them find that leading a healthy lifestyle and getting paid for it's fun and quite rewarding. So in um, regard to options with work choices, we have things like fitness instructor, boot camp instructor. We have things like coaching and more scientific like sports science. We have obviously with sport um, teaching and coaching, but then again, we go to the medical side with physiotherapy, osteopathy, and um, childcare services with our other subject in CFS. Have you spoken about CFS in detail? No, we didn't go into detail no, about that. Yeah, about so CFS? we basically what it looks at is just looking at um, family values and looking at communities and how they interact. So currently we have an assessment of the year 12 where the girls have been given a little baby mimic doll <laughs> that's programmed to cry at 1, yes. 3 and 6 a.m. Mm. And I'm pretty sure they're enjoying that assessment. Oh God. And during the day. And during my class. Yes. I have and to tell the them class. to go out and take good care of it and then come back in <laughs> when it's all calm. <laughs> okay. Do they also in CFS, I'm not sure if they do, but do they visit like... Um, yeah, so they observe childcare. Child we care. also observe our primary school children during recess and lunch okay. and our 7 to 10s during PE just to gauge interactions and how we get on on a daily basis. Okay. We might talk about the practical side of uh, PDHPE and visual art after we come back from our break. Thank you. This program is sponsored by Maronite College of the Holy Family, Parramatta. What do you do if your child has too much homework? To make the learning for the students better, more engaging. What do you do if your child does not have homework? And we group the children as per their ability. Do you prefer the traditional methods of teaching? Here we've got um, interactive whiteboards in all of as the well. classrooms. Yep. If you want answers to these questions, watch our program Educating for Success with Sister Margaret Lawson, the Principal of Maronite College of the Holy Family Parramatta on Midpoint TV. Educating for Success. Welcome back. We've still got an our studio. They haven't run away yet. <laughs> Michael and Marianne. We're going to talk more about the practical dimensions of PDHPE and, uh, and, and VAPA. I'll start with you, Marianne. Let's look at the music area first. Um, okay, they teach music as a subject, but how else is music played out <laughs> in, in school? Okay, music is an integral part of the school, whether it be for... Um, assemblies or school masses, we always have the choir working hard every single week trying to get their songs on and they're, they're very good. We're having more of an interest in the choir. As the, the junior school goes through to the high school, we're finding that there is more of an interest, there is a bigger group and it's becoming 
you know, something that's quite important for these kids to do because it shows their talents, but it also gets them involved. Um, we also have the Dubki Band, which oh, we're... Before we get on, with the choir. Yep. Is it just singing? Are there soloists? Do they, are there musicians? Or who's involved in okay, the choir? The choir's starting to expand. Initially, it was just the individual singers, and so at times they'd have their solo. Um, we've actually expanded now. We've got a, a student who works, who plays on the trumpet outside of school who is now involved in the choir. He also sings and he does outside of school um, choir work for, I think it's St Mary's Cathedral. Um, we've also got... A, the trumpet which gets involved and we've got Mr Heyman who works on the guitar and all together and they, what's his name was on the piano Michael yeah Michael does the, the piano the new, yeah no, Michael yeah. Yeah. Mm. and we we're also getting um, the violin as well oh okay yes getting That's right. Dominic mm. Dominic so it's actually quite uh, well well rounded compared to what it has been in the past and we're hoping that that increases um, in terms of the Dubki, we've got the Dubki band that plays at assemblies and that's always fun. But we're hoping to expand that to have a band going. We do have the Year 11s at the moment who are quite good at bass and, and they've got all their you know, different instruments that they play. Um, and, and with that, hopefully we'll expand on the choir. Okay, we'll move on, on to your side uh, in PDHPE. You do first aid. Yes. Do you want to explain why that, why that is done and what's, what it involves? Yes, yeah, so all workplaces involve some element of first aid and especially in sport, first aid is the immediate care. So if something was to happen at a sporting event, it's just good for the students to know what to do until um, help arrives. So what we do is with Year 11, we do our assessment task. We actually get Surf Life Saving Australia in to present a course and our kids partake in the practical uh, compression of the resuscitation dummies. They do the written test and they do the work booklet just like they would if they were to do it outside. And they were qualified first aiders and by then, the end of it? At the end of it, they will get their certificate and for three years, they're valid first aiders. Would you trust them with your life? <laughs> some. <laughs> <laughs> I do trust some of them. <laughs> okay, thanks, Michael. Miriam, back to you. Drama, do you want to talk about the, the um, practical dimensions there? Um, with drama, we've had a lot of kids who have gone through the HSA level. This actually extends further than just the studies that they do in class because for masses we have them dramatise the gospel in the past. We've also had them participate in different assemblies where they show what they've learnt or an assessment task will be their production you know, in front of the whole school. Um, our kids have also been involved in uh, anti-bullying plays that they've produced to then put, perform for the junior school. So that's always been something that's quite positive, it shows the younger kids, the older kids what they can do and gives them sort of an aspiration to what they would like to do in the future. Yeah, they're quite good at drama. Yeah. Do they write their own scripts? Absolutely. So what they're given generally is an idea, so they'll look at other performances that have been um, put forward, they will come up with an idea that they will then write and then produce themselves and then they will act, act in it. So they generally work in groups, small groups, or one large group depending on the assessment. Okay, yeah, and they do fantastic performances. Yeah, definitely. Excursions. Where do you go? Our favourite one is to Manly Beach and to Bondi Beach. No wonder why. <laughs> so the in first summer? one, yeah, we go in term one, we take our year nine pass class to Manly and we do a learn to surf course. Now, the reason we do that is most of our kids do go to the beach on their holidays and we feel it's an important part they learn just basic surf safety. Okay, not only is it a fun day, but they actually do get an element of what to do in case of a rip or current and different things like that. With our Year 10 group, we take them on a leisurely walk as part of leisure and recreation. Okay. So we actually walk from Coogee Beach to Bondi Beach. And how long does that so take? So it takes about one hour and a half okay. to two hours, depending on how fast and how slow they walk. Sometimes we cross over with sculptures by the sea, so we stop, oh, okay. yeah. we look at can them. Can I go next time? You can. <laughs> okay. And we can take our art group as well. We've we'll discussed <laughs> oh, that yeah. to take them yeah, as a, a joint excursion. Mm. And then we have a little frolic on the beach. And I know frolic's the correct word. <laughs> <laughs> and we, yeah, we have a good luck day, and so it feeds on from there, learn to surf. So we take that aspect into the beach activity. So they actually learn to surf as well? Yep, so in the Manly excursion they take them to Shelley Beach which is just behind Manly Beach and they assess them before they take them into the real surf oh my gosh. and then we go from there. And they so, actually know how to surf? Uh, it's basic uh, boogie boarding. Okay. Okay, so body boarding and but it is in waves and it's quite uh, 
rough if the kids are not confident in that. Yeah, and I was going to say, I don't think many of our students do like the beach or the water that much, or are they generally okay? They love the beach. Mm. They love the swimming. Mm. They just don't like doing it as part of Year 7 and 8 Learn to Swim program Which because talk about they more. feel that is embarrassing. Okay. However, on holidays, work. they love going to the beach and you see them all lined up at the pools. Oh, they'll go to, what's that, New Sydney, what, Wet, Wet and Wild. Wild. Yes. We had no, no one allergic to chlorine that day. <laughs> so it was a good day. We're going to talk about the Year 7 Learn to Swim program later on. Yeah. Marianne, okay, so we've done music, we've done drama, visual art, which is your area. So, yep. so visual arts is generally... Again, an integral part of the school. When you walk around the, the school buildings, you'll notice that there are artworks all over the place. Um, this, again, is one of where we actually try to develop the kids spiritually as well as like creatively. What happens is in a lot of art classes, particularly the older groups, you'll find a lot of information out about the kids because they open up, mm -hmm. they feel comfortable, they're expressing themselves. And so, again, when it becomes a, a school event, there's always artworks up displaying the kids' talents. These kids love the subject. Um, it's something that comes quite naturally to a lot of the kids. And it's one that now, like I said to you, they're finding, oh, this is something I want to do as a full-time thing. It's not just something I can waste an hour, you know, mm. playing around with yeah. paints. They, so. they do some excellent work. There's a lot of sculpture this year for HSC, oh, okay. which has never been the case previously. Um, we're doing a bit of multimedia. I was going to ask you, do you get IT involved with your Yeah, art? a lot of... Uh, and now that we've got computers in the room, it's a little easier. Um, so we're doing multimedia. We're doing a lot of, um, you know, t traditional painting and drawing. But the works nowadays are actually a bit more extended than what they have been because the kids themselves will go out and learn different programs that they can bring back to the classroom as well. So, you know, HSC year is looking really good. It looks good every year, actually. We do every quite well. Year we do very well. Mm. Our kids, the ones that do take the subject, do it with a passion and, like I said, love what they're doing. And we have, in the past, come up with great results and, fingers crossed, we continue to do so. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Michael, Year 7 have to do the compulsory Learn to Swim program. Yep. Why and what's it about? Okay, so we do with Year 7 and 8. Um, and 8, okay. As part of the PDHB curriculum, certain hours must be towards aquatics. So with the timetable the way it is, we can't get away with doing it during school time as it will take them out of other subjects. So we do during our Thursday sport program in Term 1 for Year 7 and in Term 4 for Year 8. So basically all they do, they've been put into groups and they're just going through um, basic techniques and swimming strokes to their capabilities. And how many hours do they have to fulfill? Um, the hours are 10 hours okay. per term, so it works out to be 20 a year, which is in relation to the Board of Studies. So by the end of it, we hope they're competent swimmers. Yeah. So all we want from them is just to have basic water safety and just... Um, an ability if they were to get into an unforeseen circumstance in the water that they'd be able to handle it. What about those who already know how to swim? Do they still have to do this program? Yep. More importantly, it's to maintain and refresh and okay. to keep those. So with the more advanced swimmers, which we do have some of, okay, they'll just do extensive training okay. on top of what they're doing. So generally most will know how to swim anyway, isn't it? Um, yep, we still have a small percentage who are afraid, of the water. Are afraid <laughs> or who don't have correct technique. Mm. But as I said, we're building and each year in the last four years, our swimming has improved and the excuses for not swimming have decreased. That's right. and so we it's see, good. And we see that in our swimming carnival. Yeah, There's and a especially attendance. this year's carnival. Well, last year we didn't get to see due to the rain. But Poor weather. Mm. Yeah, this year's one we had high participation and a lot of people actually swimming. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. I mean, we live in Australia, so... And we're surrounded by water. That's right. Um, <laughs> no choice. <laughs> Maryam, the big, big thing, Expo Extravaganza at the end of the year. How does VAPA contribute to that? Okay. In the past two years, um, it's actually gotten bigger and better. Uh, we're, what we're doing now is actually putting and showcasing every, everything in the arts. So from, the, from design to the art, the art actually participates with the displays that we put up in, but we also have the drama performances. We also have the masks on display. So kids in year eight who have made their masks and designed their costumes get an opportunity to walk it down the runway, um, which excites them always. The year sevens have their paintings and their portraits up, and it enables the parents to see what these kids have been doing. So the drama kids in year nine and 10 will always put on a production, year 11 as well, year 12's generally gone by then. Um, but 
you know, from the music last year, we had a bigger increase and more involvement, which is excellent. Kids are always keen to get up there and dance and, and sing, and sing out loud, <laughs> which is excellent because a lot of their yeah. kids are so talented and mm. it, it is an opportunity for them to show exactly what they can do. Mm. So it's very exciting. One last question for both of you. If you had the chance to redesign the school, which you're not going to get, but if you did, what would you see? What would you like to see more that would assist the PDHPE department and the VAPA department? Um, space. Playgrounds. Yes. Playgrounds. So, with our playground, obviously a grass area would be nice. We've got a little um, synthetic grass area, which is good, and a little basketball court, which would be beneficial. As I said, like we do well with the space that we have, the equipment we have is quite good as well. It's just the well, limited space. Volley, volleyball court. Yeah, mm. just a limited space impacts so, on. So more just outside yeah, running like area. The basketball and things like that. Mm. Otherwise, we generally cope quite well. Okay, Marianne. Okay, here's a big hope and dreams. <laughs> yeah. I would love to actually have a design and technology and visual arts block oh. where we could have a downstairs drama room and then build on top of that with a woodwork room onto the side and from that we'll have the visual arts um, art classrooms at the wow. top, a pod room room, the mm. visual arts, I mean a, a film studio. It'd be film awesome. studio. Recording stu Other schools mm. have recording studios. And a music. staff room. Well and put it this way, Marion. I have great. I've actually designed uh, the future of the school and B Block is currently, because you know how we've got one art room across the road and yeah. one, I've actually said I want all of that located so, yeah, that in that the B Block. So yeah, we were looking at putting drama and 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 music and, and art and all that in on this side, have that it would all be together. Fantastic. But in the future, yeah. the future's looking good. <laughs> Thanks, Marianne. Thanks, Thanks sister. Michael. Thanks, sister. And thank you to our viewers who have tuned in to watch Educating for Success. <laughs>